coronation stop. Glasgow bound on a record run of 114 miles an hour. But that is 1937. Now, in this anniversary year of 1975, when steam locomotion is 150 years old, these splendid old giants are already a dream. A dream? Maybe not. This little chap, like something out of a fairy story, is a gazelle, and it's on its way to honorable retirement at the National Railway Museum in York. Built at King's Lynn in 1893, Gazelle joined the army 25 years ago. Now it's time for the little tin soldier to rest. What massive majesty these old warriors had, and still have. But sadly, the famous old names mean little to a younger generation. Now the selected remnants of Britain's iron horses are on their way to the York Museum. was opened in York just 50 years ago, a move hastily but wisely made when it was realized that those wonderful veterans that had made world railway history would otherwise fade into obscurity. Here, every one of them is lovingly tended. Prince Philip arrives to open the new expanded museum. From within the country and out of it, young and old have come for the big nostalgic event. These are the lucky ones for their immortality. From now on, they can stand and dream of the grand old days of fire and speed. But others are not so fortunate. The end of the line is the scrapyard where they die the slow, rusting death of the discarded, the unwanted. Philip sees for himself. He's of an age to remember many of the engines on display at York Museum. The old Victorian carriages are the very symbol of rectitude and righteous discomfort. from the past, a prize for any collector. Unlike ships, the names are almost always masculine and virile. Prince Philip is always ready to try his hand at anything, so why not a steam train? started it all, the inventor, George Stevenson. The improbable little engine was given a name, and the name went into the dictionary, and stayed. On the 27th of September, 1825, locomotion hauled the first railway train between Stockton and Darlington. This exact replica joins the cavalcade of engines, a century and a half later. the then Duke and Duchess of York gave royal patronage to the railway centenary. Centre of attraction, of course, was Okamotion. There was a revival of old safety regulations, and everyone had a lot of fun. Another parade of glory. LMS's George Stevenson. Before nationalisation, Britain's rail system was ruled by the Big Four. London Northeastern, Southern, London Midland Scottish and Great Western. 1918 Northeastern's 2238, Class T2. LNER's K1, number 005. The Murray share, another stalwart in the past. A penny attack that once belonged to Great Western. 
get this one. Built in 1938, this is a Great Western locomotive. LNER's Green Arrow, a veteran of 1936. The Henry Oakley took part in the 1925 cavalcade. LNER ran some track engines, the streamlined Sir Nigel Gresley in its heyday. And as it is now. In March 1960, the nationalized Peace Railways produced at Swindon the last steam locomotive of them all, Evening Star. After a glorious 135 years, the era of steam locomotion came to an end. Almost like a toy, the Wantage Tramway Engine of 1857. A complete contrast to the computer age. British Rail's world record holder, the prototype high-speed train, which set a record of 143 miles an hour just two years ago, represents the brave new world of locomotion. Today's generation will never know the full majesty of steam. most famous of them all, the Flying Scotsman. The epitome of all that a massive steam engine should be, noble, powerful, fast. A champion bearing the torch for an age that will never come again. Come again.